Hello guys, welcome to Everything Metallurgy and welcome to day 75 of 100 days 100 concepts. So today, uh, in this video, I'm going to take a question from 2018 gate empty. So the question goes in this way. A glass fiber of 5 micrometer diameter is subjected to 20 MPa stress, okay, which is a tensile stress basically, okay, tensile stress of 20 MPa. And they also gave gamma, which is my surface energy or interfacial energy which is 0 0.3 joule per meter square and e the elastic modulus of the glass fiber is 70 gp now uh, they are asking us to pick up the correct statement if the glass contains lots of cracks lots of flaws in it okay so now basically by uh, looking at these uh, values we have got the diameter we know gamma and we know e so if you want to relate the stress with all of these things you have something called as griffith theory okay so what do griffith theory say so griffith theory usually is used for brittle materials so this gives me the fracture stress of any given uh, brittle material and it is equal to 2 e gamma root of 2 e gamma by 2 c Okay, what is C? C is nothing but my crack length. Also, we know that uh, if we have an edge crack, the crack length would be different. And if we have an internal crack, something like this, the crack length that we, the C value that we take is different. So, in edge crack, let's say this is A, okay, and this is also A. So, in edge crack, so this is my edge crack, this is my uh, internal crack, or you can also call uh, surface crack or edge crack or internal crack or central crack right so in edge crack you see that you only have one stress concentrator for the crack so here you see a should be taken as c whereas on the other side for internal cracks you have two tips so two stress concentrators so you see this so one internal crack is actually acting as two edge cracks so that is the reason why you have to split the total length into both the cracks okay each of half i mean each half is to be seen as a separate edge crack so here a by 2 will be my c okay so this is an important thing now so what are the options let's uh, come back to the question so options are uh, they're asking to see whether the stress is sufficient enough that the fracture is taking place or not okay so for that the griffith theory is an absolute uh, approximation because it tells us the fracture stress that is actually required for a material to fail okay so now uh, here we don't know the c right he, we don't, we only have this particular guy 5 micrometer diameter so what i'll do is i'll assume the maximum crack size the maximum crack size is almost equal to 5 micrometer and when i say the maximum crack size so let's say uh, this is my fiber itself so this is 5 micrometer right the diameter it has a circular cross section so what i am telling is i have a surface i mean an edge crack something like this which sorry it's an internal crack my bad uh, it contains an internal crack where it is almost equal to 5 micrometer this is my assumption okay so that if uh, that is the case if this 20 mpa is applied will it cause a uh, brittle fracture or not that is what i want no so because it's an internal crack as i said here so my c will be equal to what 5 by 2 okay which is 2.5 micrometer so now for this particular case let me calculate the sigma f so this is equal to how much root 2 into e is 70 gpa so 70 into 10 power 9 into gamma is 0 0.3 divided by oh sorry it is pi I think I just uh, made a mistake here. So the formula is root of 2e gamma by pi c. Okay. So this is equal to pi into c. What is c? 2.5 into 10 power minus 6. So if you solve this, you will get around uh, 73 MPa. So the fracture stress, if the material contains 5 micrometer internal crack, which is the maximum size, of course, because it's covering the whole diameter. So, no crack can be greater than this. That's what I mean. Okay. So, if this is the case, the fracture stress 
is coming out to be 73 MPa. That means in this particular scenario, you need to apply a tensile stress of 73 MPa. Only then you see fracture. But here the tensile stress that is uh, that the fiber is subjected to is only 20 MPa. So 20 MPa is way less than my sigma f. Okay. So what you can do here? So definitely we have considered a maximum crack size. Why? Because this is the minimum fracture stress that is required for a failure, right? Because you can see the proportionality. Sigma f is inversely proportional to root c. If c is decreasing, what happens? Sigma f will be increased. That is the reason why we have considered c max so that your sigma f will be the minimum. And here in this case, the even the 20 MPa is even lesser than the minimum fracture stress that you require. That is the logic. So, in this case, there won't be any fracture. So, no fracture will take place. Okay. Fine. But here we have some other thing. What is, uh, if you see, undergo brittle fracture wrong, no fracture at all. Buckling. Buckling is also wrong because buckling usually is taking place in compressions. Right. But here we are applying a tensile stress so no question of buckling also but what about these guys here it is telling fine no fracture no fracture but what about this elastic deformation or plastic deformation so if you remember when i said about this guy this griffith theory i said this is an approximation used for perfectly brittle materials right so this is only used for a brittle material okay the theory itself considers and explains about brittle materials. So there is no question of plastic deformation at all. Why? Because we know how brittle uh, materials fail. It will fail in a straight line itself. If you see the stress strain curve for a brittle material, how it will be? It will just go something like this. You don't have the plastic deformation region. So even this option is gone now. So what else we are left with? So definitely, if this is my, uh, let's say this is the graph that you have. And this particular guy over here is 73 MPa, where it may fracture. But now, I am actually applying only 20 MPa. So, what is the region which I am lying in? I am in my linear curve. Linear is nothing but my elastic region or elastic limit. That means, you see elastic deformation taking place, but fracture is not taking place. Why elastic deformation? Because we are already considering a brittle material. Right. So, I hope uh, this question was asked by a couple of you guys. So, I hope you understand uh, this particular concept, how you can go about and use Griffith theory to solve this. Right. So, if you like it, please hit the like button and also share with all the gate metallurgy aspirants. We'll meet you tomorrow with one more interesting concept. Thank you guys.